Welcome to John Park's workshop. It's me, John Park, and here we are back in the workshop, I'm excited to say. Uh, thanks for stopping by and coming to check things out. Uh, if you want to hang out in the chat and uh, benefit from all the fun discussion there, links and other things, then head on over to our Discord. Uh, you can find the uh, chat over at adafru.it slash discord, and that's where you'll, uh, you'll see a lot of the good conversation going on. Uh, and let's see, I always keep an eye on that because that's where I find out uh, what's going on, and particularly if my uh, microphones and things are working, because you know how live streaming is. It can be, uh, it can be a lot. Uh, but let's see. Before we go any further, uh, I've got a couple things to mention. First of all, uh, we have a exciting event coming up next Wednesday. That is going to be the AdaBox unboxing. There it is, AdaBox unboxing on July 29th. That's Wednesday. I hope I got that date right, but it's Wednesday, next Wednesday. I keep getting that date funny in my head. Uh, and that'll be at 7 p.m. Do I have that right? 7? Is that the Ask an Engineer time? No, 8. 8 p.m. I'm going to fix that right now so that, <laughs> so that doesn't sit there being wrong. 8 p.m. There you go. That's when it is. 8 o'clock on uh, Wednesday, July 29th. That'll be the Ada Box 15 unboxing. Can you believe it? Uh, it's been a long time in the making, so uh, thanks for your patience. That one uh, was going to go out right about the beginning of uh, the COVID uh, quarantining, so that made it uh, impossible to, to get supplies in. In fact, uh, factories and shipping and things like that were, uh, were a little tricky. Yeah, thanks, Jim. Uh, Hendrickson over in the Discord chat confirms. 8 o'clock Eastern. Thank you. Whew. Uh, I never trust myself on times or dates. Uh, let's see, what else have we got in store? Uh, I wanted to let you know about our, uh, some of our other shows that are going on. Uh, I have no idea what that is in Greenwich means, <laughs> Andy. Uh, I've been doing the Make Code Live show over on the Microsoft Twitch. That's uh, twitch.tv slash msmakecode. Uh, and that uh, is at 12 o'clock noon Pacific time, 3 o'clock Eastern time, and you can extrapolate out other time zones from that if you dare. Uh, and that, uh, that shows an hour of uh, deep dives into Make Code. And in fact, this week, the Make Code Live inspired what I'm going to talk about in the workshop show today. I, did, I, uh, I showed some of the software side of uh, modifying or retrofitting a Guitar Hero controller. Uh, and this week on the workshop show, we're going to take apart some of these controllers and have a look at them and talk about uh, how I'm connecting to them, some different uh, opportunities you have for, for different ways to connect, uh, and ways that you can use these really cool controllers. You'll see, in fact, Lars is back there with one. Uh, there he is. Hey, Lars. Say hi to everyone, would you? Uh, so I've got a few of these. We, uh, we played this game a good bit, uh, and I think Rock Band, Rock Band and Guitar Hero, you could play them both with the same controllers. We had it for Wii. Uh, it's a good platform for hacking, but you can use uh, the controllers from any, any of these, uh, the Xbox ones, the PlayStation ones. Uh, so we're going to talk about that, but yeah, that originally uh, came from my project this week in Make Code Live. So uh, stay tuned for the next one. Who knows what will happen? Uh, let's see, what else have we got? I, uh, have a product pick of the week this week, and, uh, this is also a related one. This is something that we'll be looking at, uh, in, in, uh, in use, and, uh, that is this lovely iFixit toolkit. Uh, so we have, uh, a few different things from iFixit available in the Adafruit store. Uh, let me find my, where did that page go? I'll show you the link to that uh, right here. So this one uh, is called the Essential Electronics Toolkit. Uh, I have a larger one. It's just got more bits for the most part. Uh, but I like these. It's a very nice uh, uh, handle. And then you've got a few different bits. And some of the key bits in here, uh, I think this, this shows, here's a close-up of, of some of the bits. Uh, there are a few different Torx bits. 
which are handy, and these are the ones that have a little hole, like a security screw, they got a little hole in the center in case there's that little security post, uh, and it's a six-sided sort of asterisk. Uh, so it's got a, a T4, 5, 6, 8, and 10 Torx. I'm using the 8, I think, or the 10 on this project to open up the Guitar Hero controller. It's also got, I think, a uh, tri-wing there, which is really useful for dealing with Nintendo cartridges and some, uh, some consoles, uh, Game Boys, getting inside of them. And then a few sort of more normal, uh, uh, Flathead and Phillips. Uh, so this is a, a nice little set, and I recommend it. It's a really good way to, uh, to get inside of some of your devices, which we'll be doing today. So that's my product pick of the week. Uh, and let's see, for a gear report, um, so this is also, again, related. Everything's, uh, everything's related here today. Uh, for our gear report, uh, I wanted to show, this is something we're not directly going to be working on today, uh, but it's kind of an interesting one. And this is the DJ Hero controller. Uh, and I wanted to mention one aspect of it. So... Uh, again, we played a bunch of this many years ago, and I have a few of these controllers. And these are pretty interesting because it's got a rotary encoder here with a uh, slip disc, and it can take three button entries. So the game itself works as a rhythm game by hitting the correct lanes, but also doing uh, record scratches to change which lane uh, you're in, if I, if I remember correctly. And this is to hit the timing of them. Uh, it's got a crossfader. And one of the cool things about this one is you could unlock the turntable and put it into the other side of the mixer. You could even do two turntables on the mixer. Um, and something interesting I found out about these in looking at them a little closer and some of the Guitar Hero controllers is that uh, the way they connect, they actually have an I square C four wire connection between these peripherals. Uh, and then the output is over a Wii nunchuck, or rather a Wii mote. So uh, this is a six pin connector and it's uh, essentially taking a few different I squared C devices. So this one's a device. Uh, I think there might be a couple that show up as devices inside of here. Another turntable is another device. Uh, so we get all these I squared C addresses then being uh, sent as, uh, as data across the wireless to the console. Um, and in opening this one up, I found. Here's uh, it was an easily detachable uh, version of one of these little connectors. In fact, let me go to an overhead view so you can see this one. Uh, so this is the little connector that Nintendo uh, or people making peripherals for Nintendo use to uh, connect things up that are using I2C. You can see there it's got the four wire uh, points of that connector soldered into there. And um, so I'm going to just sort of steal this one. I soldered some header pins onto it so I could just use jumpers and start looking at the data that comes across that, which is uh, a little different than some of the other um, info you'll see out there where the just the full Wiimote uh, six pin connector is being, uh, being queried for multiple devices. So uh, that's my gear report. These things, I uh, used to see them a lot at thrift stores. You can also buy them on eBay. The cheapest way you'll get them is, is on like a Craigslist or a thrift store. A lot of people have these left over and uh, aren't playing the games anymore. So that's my, uh, my gear report, my little uh, DJ Hero turntable, which I think could be a really interesting interface uh, for something that needs a large spinny knob. Uh, all right, and then let's see. Let's uh, have a look now at, I'm going to pull up a uh, browser here so we can do the make code minute. All right, so uh, I'm going to get my browser here set up. So I've got the Chrome browser here. And uh, this is the uh, Make Code Arcade. And what I wanted to show today in the Make Code Minute inside of Make Code Arcade is how to make a randomized rock band name generator. It doesn't have to be rock. It can be any kind of band. It really can be any kind of name that you need named. Uh, so what we have here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to full screen this. This was very quick and easy to code. What I have is a little app that says press A to name your band. So we'll press A 
And there's our band name, Sour Bonafide Truth. Not bad. Uh, and the fun of this, of course, is each time uh, you reset it, we'll press A, we get another one. This is Ethereal Piston Pants. I saw them at the forum. Oh, Ethereal Leg Strangers. Pink Leg Strangers. It's funny, the randomization, if you don't have a huge list, gives you some uh, themes. Calm Karma Pointer. Trailing Skull Champs. Likes the pants there. Ethereal Bitter Moment. The Bonafide Band. The Chonk. Not bad. Uh, and what you'll see here, I'm going to fly through these because I'm dying to find one that has our good friend uh, Lars in it. Rats, there's a band, the Pink Bots. Pink Lars Python. Hmm, weird. Okay, so let's take a look at how this is done. Uh, first of all, you see I'm pressing A. Each time I press A, uh, I'm setting a new background color just by picking uh, from a random number for the 16 color index uh, values that are there. And then uh, I'm doing this set phrase variable to be a uh, join operation. And you might not have seen this before, but if you look in advanced text, we have some uh, string operations we can do, including this one right here, join. And this allows you to join multiple pieces of text into a single string so that that, that can be displayed. Um, so what I'm drawing from are word lists. So these are three arrays, uh, word list A, B, and C. I'm getting a value at some random uh, item in that array. And then I'm uh, turning all of that into a single string. Then I splash this phrase, which is all of those strings put together, uh, and then we also are playing our little uh, effect in the background. So here's how I set up those, those uh, lists of strings, these arrays. Under arrays, set text lists. We started with that. And then I've got three of them where I've just simply put in all of these words. Pink, super, trailing, calm, sour, freedom, dangling, the. Uh, you'll notice in some cases I have a space. So on some uh, randomizations, we'll end up on that item, which means we won't have three words. We'll have two or even one or even zero. I didn't make any logic to avoid that. Sometimes you don't get a band name at all. Uh, you can see the middle uh, item is more likely to, to draw blank because I have more blank items in there. Uh, and then the last, oh, actually, I made this so we'll always get a name. Yeah, so I, I removed all blanks from that. Uh, and so that is how easy it is to create a band name generator using make code. So go out and buy some tickets for Sour Pants, would you? That's your Make Code Minute. Uh, and a little bonus thing I'll show actually is I decided to build uh, or decided to upload this onto uh, one of our little Pi Badge boards so you can have this uh, mobile madness fun with you anywhere you go. Let's see if we get a good one. Dangling. I can't read that on the screen there. How about down here? Here, moment. Moment. That's the band that you want to go see. Moment. Uh, so, um, you could build a huge list for this. I decided to just kind of come up with some spur of the moment, but I'm sure you could uh, look up some huge randomized word lists online and get, uh, get a lot of fun out of that. So that is the, uh, the random, somewhat strange Make Code Minute project of the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let's see. Next up, I've got a game of the week pick. So let's uh, pop back over to that browser there, and let me see if I can zoom in on this just a little bit for you. And let's go to the small version of me there. There you go. Okay, so my Make Code Arcade Game Pick of the Week this week is Tiny Wizards, and this is by S. Perkins 25, and uh, this is really cool. So it's a game that's inspired, as S. Perkins 25 says, heavily inspired by a new NES, Nintendo Entertainment System game called Micro Mages. Uh, and it's built entirely in blocks. So I had not heard of Micro Mages, and I went and looked it up, and it's fantastic. It was actually a Kickstarter maybe a couple years ago uh, for a game that you can play on a PC 
and a ROM that you can load into any emulator you like, as well as they made some physical cartridges that you can plug into an NES, which is really cool. Uh, and I imagine also if you have um, an SD card style cartridge that can, that can be flashed, you can put the ROM on there. Uh, so let's take a look. This is, uh, this is the game. I want to call it Micromages, but it's Tiny Wizards. Uh, and warning, my frame rate is better here than it is on the broadcast. The broadcast won't, won't show it very nicely. Uh, so you can see we have this adorable little wizard here, or mage. We have a jump button. We have a fireball, or spell, that you can cast. And if you jump against a wall, you can get over something huge like this. Um, and really cool thing is charge-ups. If I hold down the B button right now, I've charged up a much bigger uh, spell. So I'm going to go ahead and charge that up, drop down here, and hit this uh, gelatinous cube or blob or whatever it is for three damage. Boom! And then I'll hit them three more times. So those guys take six damage, but you can charge up and uh, work your way through an enemy like that. Oh, here comes a skeleton. Ah! Uh, Got to jump over those. Uh, so you'll see this guy got softened up. I think I hit him with my charged up. Yes, so we only took two more. Uh, so this is really cool, really adorable graphics based on Micromages, and uh, if you look at the code here, what I'd encourage you to do is go and find uh, the charge-up blocks. I won't go through it here now. One thing I'll also mention is that this is a very large block game, so it can uh, slow down the browser, and uh, there are some speed-ups inside the beta, so you'll want to use arcade.makecode.com slash beta to look at this. Uh, and if you want to go check it out, just head on over to forum.makecode.com, look in the arcade channel, and this is called Tiny Wizards by S. Perkins 25. And that is my Make Code arcade game pick of the week. Incredibly cool, really fun game. Uh, and as it turns out, actually, my son, I asked him, hey, have you heard of this game? And uh, is there any chance you have it? Because uh, he bought the, uh, there was a Black Lives Matter. Uh, racial injustice uh, games bundle where a bunch of indie games developers put their games up for a very inexpensive bundle and all the proceeds went to a Black Lives Matters um, charity of some kind. I'm not sure which one. And uh, I think there were 1,400 games in it or something like that. He might have spent 30 bucks to get them. You could, I think, name your own price. So he has it. So I'm going to go get Micromages and, and play that. Put it on some emulators. Put it on a Picade. That'll be really cool. Uh, all right, so let's see. Do I have any other business to take care of before we jump into... Um, oh, there's an interesting tip. Let me pop up the Discord there. Our good friend Toddbot says uh, there is a uh, dictionary of words in user share dict words on a Mac or Linux machine. So if you uh, look for that, you can cat it or, uh, or open it up or use it to feed your, your word generator. Uh, you can make some, uh, some huge lists of words for your, your uh, band name generator. Very cool. Um, and that might also be something that you look at uh, coding in the JavaScript uh, version. If you, if you take a look at how I built that, move over to the JavaScript version, and then you could uh, do some uh, search and replace types of things to build up, take a huge list into there, and just add the, the proper uh, parameters around it. So. Uh, very cool. Thank you. And I, I think there may even be ways to look at external word lists in some of the file operations uh, in MakeCode, which I haven't tried before, but that would be really cool. Make a giant, giant name list. Uh, all right. What else? Um, okay, so let's talk about this project. So what I've got uh, going on, this is the project I built for uh, the Make Code Live. And what I've done is I've taken uh, this Guitar Hero controller. This is a Wii Guitar Hero controller. Uh, you can see I've pulled off the familiar white face plate that was there because you have to to get to a couple of the screws. And uh, the way these work, there's a little, um, there's a set of buttons, five buttons up at the top. These are the fret buttons. And then there's a little strum bar. It's a pair of switches. Uh, and that's the main gameplay, is that you pick notes and strum in time. And you can also do things like just tapping notes or hammer-ons and hammer-offs. Um, so what I did was I just went and directly uh, soldered some wires to the interface that these buttons are plugged into internally. 
and I'm just using them as uh, switches to close uh, contacts on digital input pins on the Circuit Playground Express. So if I go ahead and plug this in, I'm not going to try to play the game now, A, because I'm terrible at it, and the, the lag, I, I proved on Tuesday, the lag of, of some of the things going on with trying to play audio and stuff made it even worse. That's part of my excuse. Um, but what you'll see here, I'll, uh, I'm just going to open up a text editor. I'll go to Adam here, and I'll make the text super huge. Uh, and so what you'll see is if I press a button, I'm going to get A, S, J, K, L. Uh, so what I'm using is the Circuit Playground Express is both lighting up colors when I do that, uh, that match. So that's going to go green, red, yellow, blue, and orange. Um, but it also is using the USB HID keyboard mode to send out keystrokes just as if you're typing them on your keyboard. And uh, most of these games allow, uh, these days you play it typically on a computer with a game called Clone Hero. And uh, Clone Hero just accepts keyboard, so you could play it with your mechanical or any, any keyboard, uh, rather than necessitating that it be acting like a game uh, controller. This could do that too with Make Code, but this was direct and easy, so that's how I did it. Um, so the way that this is working is that the neck here, it breaks down for transportability and, and smaller packages uh, shipping through the, um, through the trucking and warehousing and stores, retail system. Um, and it connects with some little uh, uh, pogo pins that are inside of here, some little spring-loaded pins, to the common and five uh, pins of these buttons. So that slides into there, and then there's a uh, kind of modular approach inside of here. And so what I wanted to do is show uh, what that looks like and maybe uh, how I'll go about adding some extra controls to it, some of the other things that are on here. So uh, I'll set this one down over here just for the space of it, and let's head over to the workbench to take a look inside. Uh, let's go. In fact, I'm going to go right to that and that view. Okay, so excuse me while I get a drink of water. It's getting a little hot. Okay, so what you'll see here, uh, <clears throat> this is the neck here with its little pogo pins. And I'll show you one that's a little different. There's, there's a different revisions of these guitars. Uh, and this, I, by the way, I mentioned this is uh, where I went and used this um, Torx bit with this. Uh, this is the larger size version of one of these iFixit kits to go in and pull out about 10 screws. Uh, they're on the back and then there's a couple that are hidden under the faceplate. So this is what the faceplates look like on here. Let me move this up into camera view for you. And you can see I've started some of the uh, probing and, and marking of, uh, of the board here. So this is what this starts out life as. And so that sat right on top of this backing here, uh, a bunch of screws later, we can open this up. And like I said, this uh, version doesn't actually have any uh, batteries or Bluetooth or uh, USB wiring. All it has is a connection to a Wiimote, which is really clever. It actually, I think, brought um, some simplicity to a bunch of peripherals that they just relied on your Wiimote to be the Bluetooth connection uh, for all these I squared C devices that was going back to the console. So these are simple and have a lot of space in them to work in as well. Uh, so this is here actually a little um, board that my friend Todd Bott, our friend Todd Bott, everyone's friend Todd Bott, made a few years ago, a number of years ago, to interface a Wii nunchuck with uh, a Arduino microcontroller or any microcontroller. Uh, and so this has six pads on it that connect to this standard um, interface uh, dongle that 
plugged into the bottom of the Wii Mote. So I'm using it here right now just to identify some of the common ground and power uh, solder points on this board. Now if you look at um, this controller here, let's see, should I, yeah, I guess I'll open this one up real quick. Uh, I'll show you what, does that matter? No, you know what, there's nothing in there that'll, that'll look that interesting. I think we have everything we need here. I won't, I won't waste the time on screen that. Uh, so if you look here, this is the little set of pogo pins, so little spring-loaded contacts that the guitar neck clicks into. And in fact, there are people who play this game, uh, and one of the modifications they do is they bypass this and wire directly uh, these button switches to this board because uh, under extreme conditions, you can lose the contact there. Um, so there are a few different modifications to make those sit tighter or never never use them in the first place and just wire directly. So then you can't uh, take this part off. Um, so what I did for the one that we looked at with the Circuit Playground Express is I identified a common uh, point here, which I think is ground, but given how I had uh, pull-down resistors on the Circuit Playground Express, I actually plugged it into power, into 3.3 volt in that case. Uh, and then these others are all either open or closed to that common. Uh, because it's just button switches up at the top. Uh, it's little foam and carbon contact buttons up here. Um, if we look at how that's routed, we get a uh, common line uh, for ground here, I've marked in a few places. And that holds true for these buttons here and here. There's two button switches that are actually, they look like keyboard, mechanical keyboard uh, switches under this, two of them. Uh, and then we also have a XY axis joystick. So there's two potentiometers connected to this. And there's one potentiometer connected to uh, this whammy bar, which means we should be able to get um, an analog voltage that we can read with any microcontroller from this center line here. If we supply ground and power there, it'll act as a voltage divider and we can read uh, the, um, the values of this potentiometer. And same for these two. So this, uh, if we unscrew some of these, let's, uh, let's pull this one apart. I'm gonna use the, uh, actually gonna use the electric screwdriver here to make fast work of this. So there's three Phillips screws here. that. Also good to have an ice cube tray or something else for storing all your screws as they come out, um, which I just have a little dish that I'm using for some of the ones that were the same size. These are uh, some of the interior ones, which I don't have a dish for. So if you look at this, we just have sort of your typical game joystick, which is a pair of potentiometers. So there's one there and there's one there. And so it's just moving on two axes and giving us uh, mixed voltages from the, from the two. I mean, you can synthesize that as, as uh, directions or however you want to use it. And these are probably like 10K or 100K resistors here, um, potentiometers. So uh, that is one place that we can make a connection into a microcontroller board and read a couple of axes. I'm just gonna put one screw back in here so that doesn't flop around. Uh, and then I thought it might be interesting. So I got my son to start um, playing the clone hero and he's, he's great at it. He's, he's good at rhythm games and he plays, plays actual guitar. So uh, way, way better than me. And I thought it might be fun to build him a nice uh, controller he can use on his PC because he's not gonna use a Wiimote and deal with all of that Bluetooth drivers and things like that. It's, it's, a, it's a way hackier than just making a, a direct USB connection. Uh, and in fact, the guitar that Lars ha has back here um, is, let's see, let me, let me see if I can get my camera switcher connected up here and working. It might not be active right now. Okay, I'll just, I'll hold it in front of this camera instead. Uh, so this one, this is the third guitar that we had, and this one's considered to be one of the better ones uh, for playing the game. It has, um, not only these buttons, but it has a little touch bar. Uh, I don't know if these are capacitive touch. I think they are. And so these allow you to do really fast uh, tapping on, on them without having to click something. 
And uh, another interesting thing about this one is that it has that same connector that we saw on the DJ Hero controller. So there's a kind of a better I squared C connector there instead of those uh, pogo pins. So that makes a better connection and apparently that means this one doesn't uh, miss hit, doesn't have miss hit problems like you might experience with the other ones. So I thought it'd be fun to turn one of these into a really uh, fully featured um, modern USB controller. Uh, what I'm gonna do just for the testing initially, and uh, I may keep this, I may not, but it's kind of fun that a full-sized Arduino or Metro board fits right here uh, where the Guitar Hero uh, Wiimote would go. And if you flip that over, you can even see we get like a nice uh, Metro M4 logo back there. So that might be fun to connect into there. Of course, I could use a feather or an itsy bitsy. Um, and one thing I'll address actually is that the, uh, the hard work of using these has already been done. People have figured out uh, and written libraries for Arduino and, and uh, a lot of people run it on Teensy where they're getting the I squared C directly from all of these systems uh, all these I squared C devices that are being broadcast from this little chip, uh, they've, that's been decoded and that's been figured out. So you can, you can find some really good projects out there using things like Teensy um, to convert all this to USB keystrokes or game controller, um, which would be fine, but I thought it would be also interesting to show, given the fact that there's not that many individual analog or digital um, outputs being used here that we could get by with just a microcontroller and direct plug-in. We don't need to decode the I squared C, which makes it simpler for me. It doesn't necessarily make it better, and, and if you can do the I squared C version, it could be better. Uh, but for me, if I hadn't uh, the benefit of people already decoding these things, I wouldn't really, I don't have a sniffer and I'm not gonna figure out that protocol uh, it's above my skill level, but if you want to reuse the buttons and the analog stuff inside of a, uh, a thrift store find controller like this, it's actually not hard. Um, and so one of the things you'll do is grab a multimeter, put it in continuity mode, and start probing uh, to see what is connected to what. So uh, what I have right now is a connection to, let's Let's uh, undo some of this. I'll have a connection to ground, and I'm, I'm gonna ignore the, um, the microcontroller for right now. So if we're just looking at, uh, in fact, I'll just take the bare probes from this. So when these have continuity, it beeps. Um, if we look at something like these buttons, if I hold on to here and then use the strum bar, Okay, so I can tell that's strum bar and strum bar. Uh, and then as you look around the board, what I found is there's actually a little set of pads here. I'm not sure if this was like a debugging thing. It's an unpopulated set of pads. Let's see if I can zoom in anymore there for you. Uh, that have a uh, common ground here and a common voltage here. So that's uh, another place that you can go and check that out. Uh, better to use a piece of wire or a hook because I'm not going to be able to hold that properly. Uh, and then also what I found just with these buttons, you can kind of map these out. So uh, if we want to know which is the top on down through this row, green at the first one, uh, I can go ahead and plug this in here or you could do a continuity check just on uh, those buttons. Well, you can't focus on those. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just push this in here. You do have to kind of keep it tight by hand because some of the latching mechanism is uh, has been removed, it lives back here. Um, so with that, if I uh, connect to, let's see, this common, gotta kinda hold these like chopsticks a little bit. Uh, I'll put them just on the, the far points. So that one's ground, and then I'll start pressing buttons on the neck here. Okay, so that's the first one. That's the green uh, green button does that, and I think it goes in a row. That's the next button, next button, next button, next button. So uh, that's how I connected up for the um, 
Circuit Playground Express on the one I did, I just ran some alligator clip wires out so I could just clip them onto the Circuit Playground Express. Um, what we could do to make this one step nicer is maybe use some ribbon cable and go with some color coding, cut one end of these, solder them, and then head them on over to our um, uh, Metro over here. Uh, these are pretty big and bulky, and this is, this is annoying ribbon cable just because of its size, so it might be better to go with some silicon, uh, some small gauge silicon wire. Uh, and again, you can see why the I squared C thing is so nice, because it means we don't have 16 wires running out here or whatever it's going to be. Um, but it's also very direct and very easy to work with. So um, let's see. I think that covers probably what we'll do today. I don't want to put you through me um, testing and adding uh, new um, points to this other than let's, let's just try one thing, which is if I take my Metro here, uh, what I have it programmed to do right now is on pin 12, if we uh, get continuity, we'll turn on and off this uh, NeoPixel. Can you see that NeoPixel changing? I can barely see it changing on one of my cameras. It's a little better on the broadcast. Um, so you can see that, that changing there. It's really orangey on the one monitor I have. Um, so what I'll do is take, um, I have a ground pin that I can clip onto easily right now just from this little Toddbot adapter here. So I'll go, let's try that actually, I'm going to put that to voltage. Um, so we'll go common here to plus and then connect that to Five volt. And so what this is going to do is take, oh, actually, do I need to? Yeah, I should go to ground. Um, this will essentially allow me to clip into this uh, negative leg here. So I'll go from an alligator clip to ground on my microcontroller. And I'm using one ground right now for the NeoPixels and the power is going to NeoPixels and then I have pin 6 here where I'm sending uh, colored data. Uh, and then pin 12 right now is the one I'm reading. So that should go, when I close that to ground, uh, that's what's turning this on and off. And you can see if I touch the uh, button right now, that's, you can see that shifting, I think. Okay, so that means that we're reading one button and uh, that would just, we would just repeat that across the way I did it with the Circuit Player on Express. Uh, and then we can start reading analog in. So we've got, I, I started marking these, you can see, um, power and ground for these two potentiometers, and then that means one of those is the x-axis potentiometer, the other is the y-axis potentiometer. So we could run those two out and into a couple of analog inputs on uh, the microcontroller here. Uh, same with this one, and then with these buttons, um, we, uh, and finally these switches. Uh, last thing I wanted to do, just because I, I kind of peeked at this earlier but didn't take a good look, is if we can get this out easily, I want to show you the whammy bar board here, or the, rather the strum bar board here. Um, let me grab a Phillips bit here. Because I think it's very cool to look at the uh, construction here of something that is definitely going to get a lot of abuse. So this strum bar, you know, gets hit hundreds of times in a single song. Uh, depending on the song. So I wanted to show the way that that was built. You can see there's a lot of um, standoffs here that the board, the PCB, connects to to give it some rigidity, and there's a pretty thick bosses that it screws into. Oh, look, that one's a very long screw. All right, how about this one? I'm going to keep these in order as I take them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
this is where having a magnetic uh, and labeled pad for setting down your screws is nice because you can keep them in the same physical order as you took them out. Speaking of iFixit, that's something they do very well is uh, in their guides, they show how to pull things apart and keep track of the screws. Oh, that's a tiny one there. Okay, so if you look at this board here, uh, we can take out, that's the little pogo pin guy. Uh, and I'm gonna unscrew, there are some little uh, wire routing bits here that are gonna prevent us from lifting it out. Might as well take them all out. And I will take out that joystick too, because that's part of it. Okay, now we should be able to take this fully apart. And there you can see, so this is uh, what these two holes were screwed into, actually these four, into this right here. Uh, this is the actuators, so these here are what hit these switches. Actually these two right here are what hit these switches. And these switches are, they look a lot like Alps switches from a mechanical keyboard. They have that, that same uh, shape right there. But they're a little strange looking. The shape is the, of them is a little more rectangular than square. Uh, and those are just soldered in there. Interestingly, they don't have um, any uh, mechanical connection. So it's just the solder points, but all the stress on this is just directly downward, so they're not going anywhere. Uh, they're never gonna get hit at angles because of this design. Uh, and that even tells us up, down. Uh, oh, and we also have some nice silk screen on here. Ground, pause, back. VCC, something analog, ground. Yes, yeah, so this is a helpful board to look at. Oh yeah, in fact, here, this, there's a little hot glue here to keep that in place, but once we get that off, it tells me uh, ground, Z-L-Y-X-B-A. I don't know why Z-L, there you go. Uh, so hopefully you found that interesting and enjoyable. It's a, it's a very approachable one to, to go and start hacking with. Uh, and they're plentiful. I haven't checked eBay lately to see what the cost is, but uh, your best bet with these is to check your basement, if you have one, or your attic, your garage. Ask some neighbors, uh, or go and check out Craigslist, or if there are thrift stores open, uh, yard sales is a great place to buy these, just because there's tons of them. Also, retro game stores have them fairly cheap. So, uh, it uh, since, since we can get it plugged into a microcontroller that can do the USB keyboard strokes. You could use it kind of for anything. Uh, it can be any, doesn't just have to be used for guitar games. You could use it as an input for anything you want. Um, and uh, it's actually fairly compact. If you pull the neck off, you could use things like the uh, analog whammy bar and the joystick there for who knows what. Excuse me. So uh, let's see, I'll check back in with the chat and see uh, if there's any thoughts or questions. Uh, inside of the lid of your iFixit grid pattern for holding screws. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Thank you. Um, where'd it go? Thank you, Mr. Certainly. I don't know where I put it now. <laughs> but yeah, the, uh, the iFixit uh, screwdriver case thing here, this, the lid of that has a nice little grid for holding screws. And I totally forgot that. That's smart. Uh, I miss a lot of things by not watching the chat at all times, don't I? Um, all right, good. Well, thank you all for uh, stopping by, and I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you want to see the specifics of setting up software, I did it in Make Code uh, on the Make Code Live live stream. You can go see that archive on uh, the YouTube channel, Adafruit YouTube channel. It's also on the Twitch. It should be on the Twitch archive for uh, MS Make Code. And uh, you, of course, could write it in Arduino. You could write it in CircuitPython. There's a lot of ways to go about it. I think I'm going to build up this uh, nicer version for my son using CircuitPython. Uh, and uh, I'll let you know how that goes. Hopefully, he'll be shredding soon. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so before I go, last thing is just an, another reminder that if you want to come and see the next Ada box get unveiled, you may have started to get yours in the mail. I know some people have started to get these in the mail already. Uh, and that's going to be next Wednesday, July 29th at 8 p.m. And I'm going to do the full unboxing, show all the good goodies that are inside and some uh, sample projects of things you'll be able to build with this next Ada box. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe for the next one. It'll be Adabox 16. I believe subscriptions are open for it, and I believe there are slots available. Uh, if you ever go and go to subscribe and there's uh, none available for the upcoming one, you can subscribe and get the one after that. So uh, I say go for it. Um, let's see. The uh, questions from the chat we got... One more question in the chat. That is from Sean W. Scully. Is there a link to the Wiimote interface board? Ah, that's a good question. Uh, the one that I was using, uh, I'll show you here. This is Toddbot WeChuck, I think is the... Yeah, I'll show you this link right here. Uh, WeChuck Nunchuck Adapter, that's uh, on the Toddbot, T-O-D-B-O-T dot com blog. You can go uh, go there and see info about it. I think there's probably a, a link to PCB for it. I don't know that he's selling them anymore, but there's info about uh, how to interface with it, uh, what the pinout is. So that's, that's where I got my info. Uh, I know there are other people uh, that created similar uh, types of boards after uh, Todd put out info on that one. Um, so I think it was maybe Spark Fun or someone sold them at one point. But yeah, go look for Wee Chuck adapter or Wee Nunchuck adapter, Wee PC board, PCB board. Uh, that's it. All right. Thank you all so much. And I will see you next time. And uh, by the way, there's no show and tell today after this. Uh, so next show and tell will be next Wednesday before the uh, Ada Box unboxing. So. Uh, thank you so much, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.